This video describes the new Attribute Capability Analysis Statlet added to Stack Graphics 18. This is the first of two parts. This part describes the use of classical statistical methods. The Attribute Capability Analysis Statlet is used to estimate process capability based on observed attributes. Process capability is roughly defined as the ability of a process or service to deliver a quality product, where quality is specified by adherence to well-defined standards or specifications. This statlet uses both classical and Bayesian methods to estimate either the proportion of non-conforming items or actions or the rate of non-conformities. We'll start by considering estimation of the proportion of non-conforming items. Suppose we inspect a random sample of n items from a process and classify each item as either conforming or non-conforming. Let's let x be the number of non-conforming items in the sample. Let's let theta be the proportion of non-conforming items in the entire population from which the sample was selected. For example, suppose we inspect 100 items and find no non-conforming items. How should we estimate theta? The first thing to recognize is that if we take a random sample of n items, then the number of non-conforming items x follows the binomial distribution. There are two methods that we could use to estimate theta. We could use the classical approach, which uses maximum likelihood, or we could use a Bayesian approach based on a distribution of prior knowledge regarding theta. This video will describe the classical approach. In the classical approach, the maximum likelihood estimate for theta is x divided by n. In our example, that would be 0 over 100, or 0. This doesn't necessarily mean that there are no non-conforming items in the population. However, the maximum likelihood estimate is 0. As with all statistical estimates, there's a margin of error associated with theta hat. We quantify that margin of error by calculating a confidence interval for theta. An approximate confidence interval can be created using the F distribution with various degrees of freedom as shown here. Since we're often concerned when we do a process capability analysis about how bad things could be, it's common to calculate upper confidence bounds rather than two-sided confidence intervals. You see here the equation for the upper confidence bound on the proportion of non-conforming items. To perform the calculations, I've loaded Stack Graphics 18. I'll now go to the top menu and select Statlets, Statistical Modeling, Process Capability Analysis Attributes. There are several fields I can set. The parameter that I want to estimate is, in this case, the proportion of non-conforming items. I'll be using the classical methods. In the field labeled number of non-conforming items, I put the value for x, which in this case is 0. In the sample size field, I put the value for n, that's 100. Where it says confidence limits, I can choose either upper bounds or two-sided confidence interval. In this case, the defaults work fine. The binomial likelihood function is graphed out for me here. You can see that it's maximized at zero. That's the maximum likelihood estimate. The red line is drawn at the upper 95% confidence bound for theta, which in this case is slightly less than 0 0.03. 
It's also useful to take the estimated proportion of nonconforming items theta hat and calculate a number of quality indices. One widely used index is DPM, defects per million. That's just one million times theta hat. On the other hand, if I take theta hat, subtract it from one, and multiply by a hundred, I get something called the yield. That's the percent of the items that conform to the specification limits. I can also calculate a z-index for my process by taking the inverse standard normal distribution and evaluating it at 1 minus theta hat. That gives me the value of a standard normal distribution which is exceeded with probability theta hat. Typically, we hope for values for z of 4 or greater. Although z is more widely used when the process capability analysis is based upon variable data, in which case it represents the number of standard deviations between the mean and the nearer specification limit, it's still a useful index for analyzing attribute data. If we take the value of z and divide by 3, we get the index CPK. Lots of companies are used to calculating CPK, especially when they're analyzing variable data. They have rules like CPK should be at least 1.33 or perhaps at least 1.5. It's still a useful index though for attribute data because it's linked directly to the proportion of nonconforming items. One last useful quality index is something called the sigma quality level. You get SQL by taking Z and adding 1.5. This is a widely used index in Six Sigma programs. Processes that are operating at a sigma quality level of 6 or greater are said to possess world-class quality. Returning to Stack Graphics 18 for a moment, you'll see the estimated quality indices both at the maximum likelihood estimate where DPM is 0, yield is 100, and the other three indices are infinity, and also at the upper quality limit. The upper quality limit estimates are particularly interesting because we can claim with 95% confidence that our defects per million is no more than 29,513, that our yield is at least 97%, that Z is at least 1.888, CPK is at least 6.29, and the sigma quality level is no less than 3.388. Now, if you think about this example for a moment, it may be a little disturbing. We've sampled 100 items. We've seen no defects. And the best we can say is that CPK is at least 0.629 and that we're operating it at at least the 3.388 sigma level. That's a fairly low level of quality, even though we've produced no non-conforming items. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that the sample size is too small. We really should not be doing a process capability analysis based on 100 samples if we're dealing with attribute data. Let's talk for a moment about how large a sample I should take. One approach to answering this question is to specify a target value for the upper confidence bound on theta hat. For example, I might say I want to take a large enough sample such that the 95% upper confidence bound 
is no greater than one out of a thousand. You also need to assume either that the number of non-conforming items won't change, that x won't change, or that the estimated proportion of non-conforming items won't change. In Stack Graphics 18, this is done by filling out a dialog box. You specify the target upper bound for your confidence bound, and then you tell it to hold unchanged either the number of nonconformities x or the point estimate x over n, which is theta hat. Returning to Stack Graphics 18, I'll now go up to the Statlet toolbar and press the button labeled Solve for N. Where it asks for the target upper bound, I'll put in 0 0.001. I'll tell it to leave the number of nonconformities X unchanged. In other words, I'm going to assume that if I take a larger sample, I still won't see any nonconformities. If I now press X, it'll tell me that I should take a sample of 2,993 items. In that case, the 95% upper confidence bound, assuming again zero nonconformities, will be just under. 0 0.001. Although sampling almost 3,000 items may seem like a large number, it's not surprising if you're trying to demonstrate that the proportion of non-conforming items is less than one out of a thousand. The second situation I want to talk about is the estimation of the rate of nonconformities. Let's suppose that we inspect a span of n units, where units may represent items, time, space, or some other quantity. I'm going to let x equal the number of nonconformities in the sample. Unlike the previous situation, a single unit could have more than one nonconformity. I'll also let lambda equal the rate of nonconformities per unit in the population from which the sample was taken. As an example, during the years 2000 to 2014, United States air carriers flew a total of 88,727,394 flight hours. There were three fatal accidents. How should we estimate lambda, where lambda is the rate of fatal accidents per flying hour? In the case of a random sample, x follows the Poisson distribution shown here. We can estimate lambda using either a classical approach, that is maximum likelihood, or a Bayesian approach based on a distribution of prior knowledge regarding the value of lambda. In the case of the classical approach, the maximum likelihood estimate of lambda is given by x divided by n. The 100 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval can be approximated using a chi-square distribution. We can also calculate an approximate upper confidence bound using the equation shown here. To have Stat Graphics do the calculations for me, I'll go to Statlets, Statistical Modeling, Process Capability Analysis, Attributes that will open up an analysis window for me. I'll set the parameter to the mean rate of nonconformities. I'll set the method to classical. I'll set the number of nonconformities to three. That was the number of fatal accidents. I'll set the sample size to 88,727,394. Now 
the confidence limits will be 95% upper confidence bounds. So when I press enter, I'll now see the Poisson likelihood function. The maximum likelihood estimate for the rate is 3.38 e to the minus 8. That's 3.38 fatal aircraft accidents per 100 million flying hours. The 95% upper confidence bounds is 8.74 fatal accidents per 100 million flying hours. In the right margin of the graph, you see the calculated quality indices. A word of caution about these indices, however. When you're working with rates, they're sensitive to how you've defined that rate. In this example, I defined the rate as the number of fatal accidents per flying hour. Had I defined it as the number of fatal accidents per flight, I would have gotten different quality indices. If you'd like to learn more about process capability analysis for attribute data, check out chapters 2 and 3 of my book, Process Capability Analysis, Estimating Quality. It's published by CRC Press.